thank you very much for, for uh, bringing me here. And um, would you like to introduce yourself to the viewers that are watching? Hello, my name is Konrad Głowacki. I'm co-founder of Sinterit. We work on small laser sintering systems. I'm mostly responsible for business and customer service uh, within the Sinterit. It's been a quite long journey uh, for, for uh, Sinterit from setting off in Euromold around 2015 uh, to, the, to the shipping of products today. I mean, I was in the store or the facilities earlier and saw machines shipping out. So it's, it, it's been a long journey. Could you tell me a little bit about any uh, challenges or, uh, or, or the transformation uh, for Sintry? The journey is much longer yeah. than that. So essentially we started in 2013. Uh, our first uh, idea, our first goal was to just check if we are capable to do anything with SLS technology. We found, found out uh, at that time that it's not easy, but it's possible for us to do that. And that's why we started building that. In 2015, it was the introduction of our offer, but the first knowledge we pushed into the market was in 2014 about that we are working on something and we are seeking people to work with us. And uh, this was quite hard because for the first two years there was only three of us. And uh, just starting around the Euro mold, we grew, grew our team by like one, two people more. And from that, that on, uh, it, was, it was really, really, really crazy, crazy time for us. And when we go to real deep problems that we had to, during our journey was that first what we need to get working prototype then then it was really hard i stopped counting how many different prototypes we already did and after that we got for crowdfunding we we found the customers but when we started ramping up on the production side we found out that we still have some development to be done because uh, customers need reliable machine that will work every single time. So we had to slightly move the schedule of deliveries. We were really happy that all of our customers were okay with that. And we even heard sounds like, I will wait whatever the time we ne you need because you are doing great job. And this was the challenges on the first manufacturing that was really, 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 really hard. Uh, and after that, when we move to the current situation, still there are challenges because we want to introduce new stuff to some new R&D. And every day we find new challenges that we need to work on. Because it, it seems like you've expanded a really a lot since, mm -hmm. since that period. Um, so you, you and your two colleagues started and, and now is, are you almost 30 right now? Yeah, so right now we are more than 30 people here. <laughs> so it's, it was great, really exponentially, I would say, at some point. More or less, uh, in two years ago, we, we have only five people here. Like, not here, it's in different office, uh, in completely different office and setup. Setup. One year ago, it was more than 15. It was the time when we already grew up uh, all the separate departments, but with like single or two people there. Uh, and right now we got to the level where we are uh, really focused on doing a lot of stuff like a really regular working manufacturer. So we have everything in place. We have people responsible for logistics, for quality control, from, for production, for customer service, sales, and so on, so on. So this was long journey. From outside perspective, it looked like that we grow extremely fast. From, for me, it was not so fast. It's like for me, the, the, everything is going so, so, so fast that I don't see this at, at so, such a big change. So it's interesting also that you say that, that becoming a, a bigger part uh, a company is also, uh, as you say, getting more areas or more um, departments 
And it's interesting as well to, to, to get an overview of, of what kind of departments and maybe how big they are, if R&D is really big or if software department is really big. Uh, just to understand a little bit where maybe where your focus is, is lying, lying right now. So in staffing, this, uh, this is the most important part to take a look on what, what's really essential for the company. And there are two main, uh, main goals here that we need to sell the product and we need to manufacture the product. But to be able to sell the product, we need to have R&D to have great, the best product on the market. So, and then this start building up. So when we were starting, we were just focusing on finalizing the design and starting the manufacturing. And it was the hardest part. So at the first, our production part was the most the fastest growing part but later on we had to catch up with marketing with sales and with customer service because as you grow up the amount of customers you have you need to get more and more customer service you need to make more and more professional and then we get to the support part which is also essential to that and of course we can talk about that we need more pe we have here one people there we have like five or something like that but from what we see it's quite fluent right now so sometimes people from customer service move more to do on the sales same goes around the marketing and it depends on what are the goal for this quarter for this month and sometimes for this week for example when we go for to some big exhibition the next week everyone are working on the customers that we met there because there are so many things to do to make sure that they got response as quick as possible. Then the, the amount of people that work on these customers grow from like three people to like eight. So I can also see like from the media uh, outputs that, that uh, the marketing efforts that you have been working with uh, uh, quite a few industry representative customers during the R&D and, and I suppose finalizing of, of design and all of this. So um, all of these marketing uh, markets that include uh, engineers, um, designers, and, and uh, uh, dentists, for example, is there any market that stands out as difficult to introduce the the uh, Sinterus Lisa to mainly the SLS technology to? Essentially, one the, the one of the market that is really hard is the dental market, because on the SLS part you cannot get below the grain size of the powder and this is the limitation and for most of the application this does not matter when you have the grain size around 40 microns but for dental application it matters so we already did some investigation on that but we saw that most of the market is not for SLS at all and there's a lot of more this kind of knowledge that we uh, got around uh, around the, our journey, around the, our work with a lot of customers. Right now we have more than 7,000 different contacts. So uh, from all around the world, from extremely different industries, from extremely different applications. So overall, this, uh, this show, show us that it's difficult to tell that this will be a solution for everything. Like this is more about finding the right tool for the right for your problem. And this is what we are doing the most. So we are talking with people that are interested and we try to advise them if SLS is right for them. Because there is no point for us to provide a machine that will not fix some of these issues, they, they will not help them in, uh, in the development cycle. So this is essentially what our goal is. Part of launching a, a new desktop-based SLS 3D printer, I assume that you both need to educate the customers and, and also demonstrate its functionality. Um, compared to the existing systems uh, out there today, that might be several times more expensive and therefore um, maybe making the customers a little bit um, uh, resilient to a, 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 such a disruptive uh, printer. 
Um, how are you dealing with this uh, that you need to educate and to demonstrate? And how do you do that in, in different markets like uh, US or, or China, for example? We can divide the customers to two groups, essentially. One group is that they would buy a big machine. And we sometimes convince them to buy our machine if they are not completely sure if big machine will, it's not overestimated for their need, for their needs. From, from this perspective, our quality, parts, quality of the parts is telling everything. So people can compare it with the big systems and they are really happy what they are receiving from us. So if the efficiency of our product is enough for them, they will go for it. So there's not big, big deal here. This is more about the need from the customer side. From other side, there's a lot of customers that didn't even think about the SLS and using SLS for their uh, manufacturing process for the design process because it was too, too expensive. Sometimes they use service pro providers, sometimes they don't have time for service provider or they are really uh, limited on the uh, on the how they can get this uh, print done. Um, so overall for this kind of customers one part is to provide for example samples, show the prints and it works great. Other side is that for SLS you need to work with powder. And this is essential to understand that and not be afraid around that. So most of our customers, like, they are really happy with what they get because they get full system. They can work with this powder like, as, with as little hassle as possible. Say, uh, but for some of the customers, that's the main blocker, and at least for now, this is this is how it goes. Like SLS, gr get great sprints, but you need to work with powder. Okay. So the really important part here is also education of the customers. We do that through our website, our you know social media. We are putting more and more designs. Uh, right now we also have a contest for designs for our printer to let people know what is really essential, essentially possible with this technology. And we will have much more soon on this part too. And the second part is our exhibition when people can walk in and really see it live. Like we every single time from the first exhibition you always print live to show that like we are doing this this is really, really working. Because the, the difference in the technology is that if, if it's working, it will work. Like, this is SLS, essentially. There is no, like, it's not, it is made, like, not working as it should be. It either works or not, uh, zero or one. But to show that to customers that uh, this, is, this is for them, this is how it works, we need to show them in person a lot of time. So that's why we have a lot of distributors here in Europe, but also we, are, uh, we have partners in uh, US and we have uh, multiple uh, partners in uh, Asia, for example, India, South Korea, Japan, and this network is uh, constantly growing all around the world. And this is, from our perspective, the most important part, that to have good partners that can promote and can show the potential of that live for customers. So, so speaking of customers, what type of customers are you uh, targeting first, so to say? And um, are there any specifics challenging in, in reaching just, just that customer group? So our main target are small manufacturing companies and design companies that use our product to speed up the life cycle, like development cycle of the product. So reaching them is not so easy because many of them, they already tried some kind of 3D printing and they decided that FDM, no, it doesn't work for us. So we are not trying anymore. So there's a lot of work to convince them to come back and try it again. From what we see, because the, the amount of range of the desktop SLS system are growing, it's 
starting to be easier because the people are getting this knowledge already now and next year we see it will be much easier but up till now this was the most challenging to convince them to try again I mean, I mean, large parts of the community that I represent are using these FDM printers or SLA printers, usually at a more hobby level, which I could say a lower level, and uh, as small companies or hobbyists. And do you see any scenarios where these type of, of uh, people are going to come in contact with uh, a Sintret Lisa system? Yes. So when we have the machine installed with also small service providers all around the world right now. Thanks to that, uh, this kind, kind of customers can reach out the quality we are providing with the service providers. So they can first check the real quality of that and if they have really tiny, tiny volume of that or the time delivery is not mattering as much for them, they can use them. But if they will see the grow on that or they see the potential of benefit to having something installed in their office or in the facility, then they can move on to owning the Lisa system. So this is like quite easy transformation from having uh, prints done with Lisa, with Sintered Lisa, and then to own this, uh, this machine. And of, of course, People that are watching are always want to know about new stuff. So is there, of course, without disclosing any of the trade secrets and everything, are there any new products that you can hint about or tease about? Maybe improvements, materials, something? Can you give us something? <laughs> so improvements we are doing all the time. So uh, this is what we are really proud of. And this really uh, costs us a lot uh, to make sure that each even currently the system, each of them is better, slightly better from the pre previous one. So it's more reliable, it's easier to use. Uh, whatever we can push to the previous customers, we do that over the software update or new tooling if it's possible. So this is this kind of improvements, we'll see some more soon from what I see. But the second part is the materials, which is really, really important to reach more customers and to just not limit between the PA12 and TPU based material. So we are doing real advancement in this, but not yet anything to share. Okay. But soon. Soon. <laughs> soon. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and and um, maybe this ties into that, but or what would be something that you see is even more disruptive to the SLS? Uh, 3D printing marketing than the actual machine that you have uh, released. Is, is there something, it could be your product, it could be something that the market needs. Is there something that you see could really renew it once more? There is one thing, but this is something that maybe everyone can t talk about all the time, but we see already advancements in that, for example, in FDM solutions. So it's that making 3D printing more like a service, like you own a 2D printer and it just prints what you really want to, to do. With FDM printers, it's already possible. This year we already saw a lot of this continuous building platforms. Like you can, you can see, for example, continuous production with Stratasys machines, for example. But for SLS, it's much harder. And I would say this is the holy grail on SLS, make it, let's say, powderless for the customers, for the end user, that they get this quality, but without the powder. The powder is not hard stuff here because it's not dangerous. This, there are more, most of the other uh, 3D printing technologies are much more dangerous mm -hmm. to work with than SLS. Uh, but people are not used to work with powder. That's why this is this is the problem. So we are we are working on that, of course. But we are seeing that in five years, that's possible to make SLS that works like big copy machine that you stand in your office. Okay, yeah. and and that's actually really good. It ties into my question as well. 
is that where do you think Sintoris is in five years? Are you the pioneers in, in that areas? Or are you somewhere else? Where do you see Sintoris in five years? So our plan is to go to this path, to advance the technology as fast as possible and get as close as possible to this idea, to this goal, to make it really easy to use SLS printing. I will not tell that it will be at home. No, this is not technology to be used at home. But we see so much potential to use this technology, not only in businesses, not only in manufacturing. There's also a lot of um, a lot of uh, interest and a lot of great potential to use it in medical application that could help not only grow the advanced additive manufacturing part or production park part, but it can really change the life of people and save a lot of lives. That's really interesting. Okay, thank you so much for uh, for the interview. Thank you. Thank you very much.